Horror films in 1973 brought us some classic folk horror, a George Romero non-zombie masterwork, and everyone's favorite demonically possessed little lady. 1974 brings us one of the few good horror musicals ever made, a famous vampire hunter, and a family that would love to have you for dinner. Literally. As we truck along with our year-by-year -year breakdown, we present to you the 10 best horror films of 1974. As the black exploitation movement frequently crossed over with the horror genre, it perhaps made the most sense that it eventually tackled zombies. Though we now see zombies as a colorless undead, the roots are very African, a product of their culture's voodoo superstitions. Those are the types of zombies that populated cinema for nearly 40 years before Romero helped to introduce our more modern flesh eating conception in 1968. And Sugar Hill goes back to those voodoo-fueled undead that were often employed as minions of evil in early cinema. The fact that they were often black adds a particularly interesting racial dimension that makes them a natural fit for something like black exploitation flicks, which were often about as politically subtle as a hammer. I'm not accusing you, honk. I'm passing sentence, and the sentence is death. <laughs> I didn't mean to do it! He told me to! I didn't mean to! No, please! No! <laughs> Captain Kronos, Vampire Hunter, follows the exploits of Captain Kronos, a swashbuckling vampire hunter who comes to the aid of an old friend. The film was originally planned as the first in a new series of films from Hammer Studios. Unfortunately, the film didn't do well at the box office, and no further entries in the series were made. This is a shame. Filled with well choreographed swordplay, excellent sets and locations, a first rate cast, and a surprisingly original story, this is one of many Hammer Studio classics that deserves a second look. Lurking in the back of every expected parent's mind is the dread that their new child will be a little off somehow. Sick, deformed, psychotic, or maybe even Satan incarnate, here to herald the end of the world. In short, here, a newly born baby slaughters five doctors and nurses in the delivery room before escaping into the night. As the parents struggle to cope with why they've given birth to a monster, the police try to track it down. The newborn craves milk, toys, and his parents. If anything gets in its way, well, you can probably figure out the rest. After serving a lengthy prison sentence for acts of murder and cannibalism, a quote, fragile old lady is released into the care of her husband and he retires to a farmhouse deep in the English countryside. But old habits die hard. With a drilling, a pitchforking, a hot poker impalement, and a dead guy with an eye missing from the socket, Frightmare delivers gruesome entertainment by the bucket load, yet also features stylish direction and some winning performances. What have you been doing to them? What have you been doing to them? If not for serial killer Ed Gein, the horror genre would be missing some of its most important films. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which we'll get to in a moment, Psycho, and Silence of the Lambs, just to name a few, are partially based and or have characters based on a legacy of Plainfield, Wisconsin's own Mad Butcher. But one movie that's often left out of the group is this one right here. This movie is a direct reflection of the life of Ed Gein, from his mother's death to his arrest. It's great. Presumed dead soldier reappears at his parents' home, there's joy. But soon, as his behavior becomes more odd, tensions arise within the family. Dead of Night is probably one of the most depressing horror movies ever made, but in this case, that's a good thing. The film is also very, very deliberately paced. It's soaked in atmosphere and it oozes dread. Youngsters today will probably find the picture too slow and boring, but you really should give the movie a chance. You very rarely see horror movies like this nowadays. Atypical and thoughtful. Watch this, Andy. 
In 1974, the modern zombie genre was still very much in its infancy. Ness was right in a newborn crave soft spot is this curio from Spain known as Let Sleeping Corpses Lie. Actually, it's also called Don't Open the Window, Do Not Speak Ill of the Dead, The Living Dead, and The Living Dead at Manchester Morgue, which is the most curious title as none of the zombie action takes place in Manchester. Anyway, in the film, a cop chases two hippies suspected of a series of Manson family-like murders. Unbeknownst to him, the real culprits are the living dead. Quick, what the devil's happening here? Would you please explain? Get inside, quickly! Get inside! Made in the coke bloat years of prog rock, this horror musical matches up Frost and Phantom of the Opera to produce a weirdly beardy story about a composer who is lured into cooperating with a sinister record producer, only for the sinister record producer to betray him, steal his music, get him thrown in jail, and eventually try to wall him up in a room in his enormous house. Phantom of the Paradise remains a supremely entertaining anomaly within the filmography of director Brian De Palma yet entirely emblematic of his filmmaking sensibility. Never see my music again. Not here, not anywhere. Do you understand? Never again. My music is for Phoenix. Only she can sing it. Anyone else that tries. Although Halloween is credited as the film that kicked off the slasher genre, and Friday the 13th is considered the one that inspired a slew of imitations, Black Christmas predates them both by nearly half a decade. This makes it all the more impressive than that despite being one of the earliest proper examples of the genre, it remains one of the better slasher movies 40 plus years after its original release. The story, of course, follows a group of sorority sisters who receive threatening phone calls and are eventually stalked and murdered by a deranged killer during the Christmas season. The caller is in the house. The calls are coming from the house. Jess! Jess, get out! In short, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a genuine classic of a genre, a punishing, unrelenting nightmare that never allows viewers even a moment of sanity or security. The film can, and will, be reinterpreted by critics and theorists for decades to come, though the movie tells a very simplistic tale at heart. A group of five teenagers traveling through rural Texas happen upon a deranged, cannibalistic family. Psychological terror and chainsaw mayhem ensue. Once again, thanks for watching, and don't forget to let us know your favorite horror movie of the year in the comments section below.